that's been soaking in the bucket for about an hour or so and there's absolutely no change. Sharpen my pencil. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally sharpen my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here now to try and sort this mess out and put everything away. Quite a few of you have asked um, for more information about the transducer box that I'm building. Well, we've got a bit of a problem. We are in the tropics and it's pretty humid up here. And quite a few of the cushion covers have gone moldy. So I'm trying everything I can to get rid of this mold. So far, I've soaked this one in nappy sand overnight and just washed it. And I've also washed it again with vinegar. My last resort will probably be bleach. This is 100% cotton, so I can bleach it, but I'm guessing it'll take the color out of the fabric, but then maybe that's a payoff. That's been soaking in the bucket for about an hour or so, and there's absolutely no change. I put one lid of bleach in the bucket. So I think I'm just gonna add a lot more bleach and see what happens. I've now got about half a cup of bleach in half a bucket of water. So let's see if that gets rid of that mold. Fingers crossed. I just checked on the cover and I am really quite surprised, but it looks like it's working. It's way better than it was before. It's been an hour or so. So I'm just gonna leave it in for a bit longer to see if I can get rid of any more. It doesn't look like the colors come out too much, so that's good. It's nearly all gone now. I don't know whether to refresh the bleach or to just leave it in for a bit longer. I, think I might just leave it in for a bit longer. Wow, I would have never believed that tiny bit left, but I don't know whether to keep soaking it or whether it's just going to rot. I think I'll just do it for a little bit longer. I'm going to get rid of those last bits because if I can, then I'm going to do it to all the big bits. I'm going to call that quits now and rinse off the bleach and give it a wash in the machine. And then over the next few days, I will soak all the other cushions. I'm gonna put some of the big pieces in next. This one isn't as bad. This big one is sort of more general dirt and fading. So we'll see if we can make the whites a bit whiter. It's all in. I pushed it under with a bowl. I'm going to give it six and a half hours and then see where we're at. This is one of the other cushion covers. It doesn't actually have any mold, but it's pretty dirty and it's pretty tired. So I'm hoping that soaking it in the bleach will um, bring it back to life. But I'm not quite sure how to get rid of this. I think it's rust, so I might have to work on that. This one's not too bad. It's a bit dirty. But this end of it, here, has got some nasty mold. So it's gonna go in the bucket. I'll see if I can get it out. This is the small one and it's been in for an hour and all of the mold has gone. I can't believe it. It's like new. And I think it's worked so well because it's cotton and that can take bleach. Oh, hang on, what's that? Is that mold or is that rust? It might be rust. Anyway, I might leave it in for a little bit longer and see if I can get that out. I'm going to give it another hour. 
I've got something else in there as well, making the most of it. Bleach solution. So I'll give it one more hour and see what it looks like and then I think I'll just have to take it out or it will probably rot. All of the um, mould stains are out of this little one now. So I'm just going to try and get rid of some of the, what looks like rust, somewhere. And I did a bit of googling and it was suggested to use lemon. So I'm going to rub a bit of lemon on there, a little bit there, and see if it works. Or maybe just squeeze lemon juice on it. It might work. Well, try anything right now. We can have pips too. So I'll leave that for about 10 minutes and see if it works. There's another tiny one. I've put lemon juice on that one. And we'll see if it comes out. So this is looking pretty good. I'm very happy with this. I'm just working on the other pieces too. And then I'll get Magnus to bring some more from the boat and do all the rest of them. It's been about half an hour and it doesn't look like it's doing anything at all. So if anybody's got any suggestions on how to get rid of this, please let me know. I would like to show you this. So this is one of the PowerPoints off Nutshell. And Magnus went to buy some new surrounds for Australian sockets. But when he looked really closely at this one, he couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it. That the whole thing is carved out of teak. It's incredible. It's all made of wood. That's all carved. Chiseled out. What's going on, babe? Gotta stop sneaking up on me. Um, sharpening my pencil. Literally. <laughs> Literally sharpening my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, I started this project about three, four months ago. This is the cockpit table. And we've got our butler hinges. Beautiful brass butler hinges from wherever we bought them from. I think it was the States. That's what we're using because when they're closed, all you can see is that on the edge. Uh, they open, but they only open part to that point and they're really strong. So they'll support the leaf and they look flash. So that's what we're putting in, butler hinges. So I've got to finish it now because we're leaving in 11 days. Yeah, so that's, that's what I'm up to. Yeah, cockpit table. Just trying to get the nice spacing for the hinges where it looks best because it's only a small length. So, I mean, these are more than strong enough, but they look silly there because this bit will flop around. So I'm thinking, sort of there, what do you reckon? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Something like that looks lovely. Yeah. What you doing? Well, um, I've got to cut eight of these um, of these little indents, and I figure it might be best to make up a template on my router. My trimmer is to make a round like a donut, so that I can put a template on, and then this will just follow it around and cut eight perfect. Um, little recesses. So I'm just seeing, I'm just playing at the moment to see um, how well it's going to work. This is where Magnus is at with the uh, cockpit table. How many coats of gut varnish you put on it? Only one. It's got one coat of varnish. It's looking pretty beautiful. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. Right, Wendy's first go at driving peanut. <laughs> now that she's got a license, she's allowed it. Yeah. She's doing all right, she started it and everything. <laughs> We're heading off in about a week.
well, we're actually moving on board in about a week. We've got to wait a bit longer for the sails to arrive because there's been a bit of a delay. We've been slowly bringing stuff onto the boat. Well, Magnus has been bringing stuff onto the boat. And we're here now to try and sort this mess out and put everything away. I put all of our flour into the freezer for two days before bringing it on board so we didn't bring gremlins on board. And we've also double wrapped it in glad wrap so if there are any gremlins in there and they try to escape we'll be able to contain them. What is going on? Um, for a start where are we? We're in Bunnings. Um, the hardware store and we are currently getting all the bits that we need to plumb in some salt water, um, salt water tap in the galley and a salt water tap aft for like cleaning fish and things and hosing off and stuff. So that's what we're doing. And that should be all the things we need. Just need a tap now. Now I'm trying to tap. Are they down there? Next row. Okay, let's go. Do we need a screw on the bottom of it? For galley? Or does no. it just come like that? Well, there's various assortments. There are various assortments. Well, there's all sorts of... They all seem to be just more of the angle and the... Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a middle that's bit. The inline. Quite a few of you have asked um, for more information about the transducer box that I'm building inside the boat. So all we've got is just a, a standard um, box that I'm building here first up, which will be a couple of sides, some ends. Um, I'm going to put doublers in here to doublers in here to thicken the the walls up so we can screw the lid on. So I'm just going to glue that up now and uh, show you what it looks like. And then we have the box all glued up. So we've got a nice strong join here in every corner. And uh, I've got the doublers there to give it some thickness where the bolts go in for the lid. So let that dry and then we'll uh, sand it up and uh, cut it to size to fit the hull because there's a bit of an angle. So I've got to cut the, um, the ends here at an angle and then glass it up and fit it in. Job done.